So hi Microbe Hunter here and today's question is I would say maybe one of the more challenging ones for me. It's a non-technical question and it's about uh, microscopy as a hobby as such. And uh, I did have to spend a little bit of time thinking about an answer. Yeah, but I'd like uh, to share it with you in any case. It's a pretty, a pretty good question. So uh, I'd like to read it out to you and then I'll give you uh, my opinion on this. Since uh, I was a kid, I'm now 50, I always wanted a microscope. I always thought that a microscope is like a drill. There should be one in every house. So far I managed with magnifying lenses and kids microscopes, but a few weeks ago I started to get serious on it and I ended up finding your YouTube channel. I watched lots of your videos and initially I found them very instructive, but the more videos on microscopy in general, not necessarily only yours, the more videos I watched, the less my willingness to buy a good microscope. And this, simp and this is simply because you and other YouTubers actually answered all my curiosity about microscopy. I first thought, I'm going to buy a good microscope to have a look at dirty water, onion skins, mold. Let's see if I find a water beer. But then watching YouTube, one finds videos of, for all of these things. Paradoxically, watching YouTube videos on microscopy decreased my curiosity because I do not really need to own a microscope to see all of these things. I can see them all via YouTube. I go straight to the question, is there a video of yours or could you make one eventually? Or could you simply answer the question about how useful a microscope can be in daily life? Thank you very much for this question. I think it's a really interesting question. And uh, maybe it's gonna be a slightly longer video again and um yeah i'm going to try of course i'm going to try to, to of course also specifically answer the question but before i do that i wanted to yeah simply tell you a little story uh, or two stories uh, that i myself encountered some months ago years ago um, i'm a biology teacher and of course we use microscopes um, in um, our school for educational reasons and uh, some time ago um, a former student uh, came back uh, to our school and visited me and, and uh, she was studying medicine and uh, still is studying medicine, I guess. And of course, we ended up talking about microscopes. And uh, she just uh, completed also a microscopy course at university in, in the context of her medical studies. And I um, asked her a little bit uh, provocatively. I asked, well, are you guys still using microscopes at university? Because nowadays, these days, what you do is you do virtual microscopy. This is basically you use a mobile phone or a tablet PC and you have high resolution scan slides with descriptions and everything. And you don't need a microscope anymore because uh, all you do is, is you look at those images on your mobile phone and you can study the images. So if the professor gives you in a scan slide um, yeah, um, over an app um, and then it's up to you to identify and you have to do a diagnosis. Is this a tumor or is this not a tumor? Well, you don't need a microscope these days anymore because you can have high resolution scans of all of those microscope slides. I mean, you don't even need a microscope. So are you even using microscopes still um, for medical for, in med school? That's what I asked her. And then she says, yes, of course we do. <laughs> because um, it's not only about seeing an image, but it's actually about uh, this um, the physical use of a microscope. And it, there is a difference when you're actually using a microscope yourself compared to just watching um, a video or an image. Of course, it's the same picture that you see, maybe even of a better quality because you have all of the image processing tools and you get a higher contrast and you can get a really nice image um, um, of a scan. But still there is something in when you actually physically use a microscope yourself that cannot be communicated or that cannot be transported um, if you're just uh, you're looking at an image. So this was a, um, but what it is, it's kind of a little bit difficult to say. And um, I might have a suggestion, which I would like to share with you um, as well. Um, and then the second example is, is also in school, I, we once were talking about cell division, um, mitosis and the chromosomes and all of these things. And of course, uh, to kind of lighten up a rather dry topic a little bit, I told my students, okay, go out, uh, grab the microscope from the cupboard uh, behind the, classroom and in the lab and uh, then let's look at some kind of uh, onion cells uh, under the microscope uh, that show um, cell divisions simply to to yeah, illustrate uh, in real life what i've been talking about theoretically 
And I've seen this, uh, one of my students was then looking through the microscope, shaking her head and, and, and looking rather, I would say almost a little bit frustrated. And I said, okay, she's got some problems here, finding the focus maybe. Yeah. She says, okay, do you need help with uh, the microscope? Ask her. And he says, no, no, no I, I see the pictures just fine. And so why, why were you shaking your head and, and, and uh, you looked so desperate a little bit? So I thought you didn't uh, you see the things. Says, no, I see it all fine. But it's, I just consider it so overwhelming and maybe even, yeah, not frustrating, but uh, astounding that we're just looking at a, a slide and uh, we don't see anything with our unaided eye. And then when you put it under the microscope, you see a completely new world. And there is so much more there than what actually we might have thought. Yeah, there's so much more there that I'm able to see now. And um, the world is so much more complicated. So it was actually an emotional response that she had. And uh, I think that maybe those two examples kind of illustrate a little bit why maybe YouTube or pictures um, that are published, even if the quality of them is very high, might not capture, not capture, might not transport the full the full picture of what microscopy is about when you, you yourself are actually sitting behind a microscope yourself. Um, so what I would like to say here is, is it's not just the picture that you see, uh, but it is also the whole context. Uh, I, I think for myself, uh, microscopy kind of connects me a little bit better to the my own immediate environment. For example, when I cook something, I cut apart a potato. Um, I don't just throw away the potato peels, but I take one potato peel over into my other room where I have the microscope, I scratch up of some of the cells and I look at the starch grains under the, um, under the microscope. Now, I've seen them already so many times. Um, I know how they look like. Uh, really, <laughs> hundreds of times I've already seen them, but I still like doing that because somehow this activity of microscopy that I try to integrate into my everyday life kind of, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of a way of life of, of looking at your environment um, that um, when I look, see something, a little bit of dust on my table, I don't just vacuum it away. No, I take a little bit of this and put it under the microscope and I see some surprise pollen grains that I did not expect. Yeah? Um, or I see some dust mites or whatever. Yeah? Um, of course, I know that they are there. But still, if you actually see it in yourself, um, then you, yeah, it's a little bit, you're connected a little bit differently to your immediate environment. And this is goes beyond simply the, 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 yeah, the, the looking at the pictures. Yeah? Um, as a matter of fact, I fully understand the, 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 the concept here because I have been, of course, also in a similar uh, situation myself when I was a little bit younger. I mean, I was a lot into flying model airplanes and now with the radio controlled drones, uh, putting a camera on a drone, would, wouldn't it be nice? Should I buy one? I want to do some aerial photography as well. And then all of a sudden on YouTube, you find the best images and says, wow, actually everything that I wanted is already on YouTube. Um, maybe there is no need for me to do that. So I fully understand this um, because I'm feeling the same way. Uh, but then again, having doing certain activities hands on yourself is again something a little bit different. Or uh, many years ago, uh, before I really got serious into uh, with uh, microscopy, um, I was uh, quite a lot into amateur astronomy. I'm still very interested in that. Um, honestly, um, the, I, you already know what to expect. You put out your microscope and the moon will look yeah, like there won't be so many differences yeah, from today compared to yesterday. Yeah, there are some differences. Yeah, but I mean, still, uh, you know, already know what you're going to see. And the pictures that um, you, you get from the Hubble Space Telescope are way better than any pictures that I'm able to make. Yeah, But still, um, looking um, through a telescope yourself uh, at the stars, at the planets, uh, seeing Jupiter and how the moons are moving around um, and how they're different from day to day. This kind of puts myself a little bit into different uh, yeah, connects me a little bit more with my environment. And this is actually where I see uh, the value of am amateur microscopy as a hobby. It is not just um, the images or the pictures, as nice as they might be, but because um, it's, I kind of try to integrate this a little bit into my everyday ac activity. Your question really um, addresses one Another important thing is, is what is the purpose or is there any deeper meaning or yeah, of actually looking at things under the microscope? Um, and uh, you were asking, is there something that uh, we can put under the microscope from our everyday life that actually is purposeful or meaningful? Um, I've been thinking about this as well. And of course, I can find examples 
but um, I personally have to admit, I don't really consider them myself very convincing. I mean, if I tell you, for example, that um, um, I do use microscopes um, more or less frequently, if I see some, I don't know, yeah, uh, some discoloration on some food, I want to know, is it mold? Is the food still good? Or is this just some kind of other spot that I see on here? What is it? I, I always put it under the microscope but not really because I want to know whether the food is still good, but it could because I'm interested. Yeah? Or I remember in, uh, that uh, sometimes there is a little tiny spot on my skin or on my kid's skin and I don't know what is it. Is it now just some kind of a little blood crust or is it actually a tick? Yeah? So I actually did use a stereo microscope and to look at this, it was a tick as a matter of fact. Um, so yeah, you can of course always find some, some meaningful reasons or um, another meaningful reason is that you might have got pretty bad eyes pretty bad eyes uh, also because I'm sitting behind the computer a lot um, and when I look through a microscope my eyes focus into the distance it relaxes my eyes I really feel that as well that it's also good for my eyesight but honestly these are not the reasons why um, I actually do that activity it's a little bit like saying okay um, why do I do why do I play a sport somewhere uh, yeah soccer or baseball basketball doesn't matter yeah you and then why, why do you do that well because it's good for your health I mean, well, then just get a home trainer and that would also be good for your health. You no, know, it's the activity itself that is also um, fun and interesting in itself. And this is essentially something that I encourage you that if you're thinking about uh, um, is microscopy something for you or not, you don't know yet, maybe at the very beginning uh, until you actually start picking it up. And my advice is, is get yourself a microscope. Then it doesn't have to be, don't, don't spend too much at the beginning if you're not quite sure. Get yourself an introductory microscope, maybe it costs less than 100 euros or hundred dollars even um, and uh, then uh, just uh, start exploring a little bit and then you discover well actually it's a cool hobby that's really something that really captures my interests because there's so many other aspects that I did not consider or well actually hmm, all of my curiosity has been satisfied and then you can leave it behind but at least then you can say that you've tried it out and another last uh, comment that I want to say is the following well um, you see, it is correct that uh, sooner or later you think that you've seen pretty much everything. I mean, I already know if I put a water sample under the microscope, I, I, I see some ciliates, paramecia, rotifers. Okay, I usually call them the usual suspects. Yeah? Some nematode worms. Really, honestly, I've already seen all of them. I already know what to expect. However, um, if you um, really want to uh, keep yourself motivated, then you have to actually raise the bar for yourself a little bit higher. Well, then the next time, don't just say, okay, um, you are just some kind of rotifers, but get yourself an identification book and try to identify them. Um, and then you basically raise the difficulty level for yourself a little bit. And this way you can try to keep up uh, your learning, try to maintain your um, microscopy in such a way that you learn new things, become an expert in specific fields. Okay, maybe um, you're not so much interested in the observation part, maybe more in the collecting part. Okay, become an expert in collecting old microscope slides maybe, or maybe preparing microscope slides or fixing microscopes. There's so many ways how you can interpret the hobby um, that keeps um, you motivated um, and interesting. Okay, and a last thing that I wanted to say, and that is really maybe one of those main points that I also wanted to address is, and that's a little bit of a somewhat of a, of a criticism of, of, of microscopy as a hobby. I wouldn't say criticism. It's something that I think we as a microscopy community have to work on a little bit. Um, and I want to compare this again to amateur astronomy. Um, I think that in amateur astronomy, there are many more so-called citizen science projects available where um, enthusiasts can get involved in scientific exploration. Um, so if you're an advanced uh, amateur uh, um, astronomer, uh, then you, I don't know, you, you try to search for asteroids. You take pictures uh, today and tomorrow and you look for moving dots. Yeah, and these could be uh, moving asteroids and you can actually try to verify this. And then um, if you're lucky um, enough, you've made a discovery. Okay. Um, the problem with amateur microscopy is, is that at least up to this point I have not really found a lot of citizen science projects where um, microscopists can become involved in actually contributing to science. 
Um, so this is indeed something that we have to work on a little bit. And so, and this is something I've been thinking about uh, projects like, for example, uh, maybe finding microplastics in water um, or in rainwater or in, in you know, marine water or in ponds and rivers. That could be one thing um, that I was uh, thinking about um, or maybe doing some kind of a building up some kind of a pollen database. This could be an interesting um, activity as well. But really, these are just some ideas that I have, but uh, there are um, so far not not really many or at least I don't know of any um, microscopy related uh, citizen science projects and that's something that I would um, also encourage uh, and I think this might also be indeed uh, one of the things where microscopy then again might make a little bit more might have a meaning just beyond um, only observing um, for the sake of observing. However, in the last point, I know I'm <laughs> rambling along a little bit here, last point is um, don't forget that every time when you make uh, take a picture of um, of something under the microscope and when you publish this, be it on a web page, in YouTube, uh, Instagram is quite popular. It doesn't matter. Um, you are in a very small amount. We're all contributing to the knowledge um, of the world. So every observation that we make and that we document increases not only our own knowledge, but if we make it publicly available, it increases the knowledge of the world. Because the yeah we, we might see the, always the same microorganisms, but the thing is is that uh, exactly the same way um, has not been seen before. Okay, and if you document this properly and if you're able to identify it uh, the the microorganism and if you say where you collected it and, and how you collected it and 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 what it is because you were able to identify it, then we're all we are putting puzzle pieces together to increase the knowledge of biodiversity in this world, and. Uh, Maybe that could be also an interesting project to kind of build up some kind of an image database um, where different people can collect images. As a matter of fact, I started a project like this. Link is in the description below. Well, um, yeah, I go back to your uh, question. Um, yeah, uh, how useful is a microscope in daily life? Um, maybe the answer really does not satisfy you but it is useful for me as a person because it is an activity that I enjoy doing. And uh, it is kind of gives a little bit of meaning in life. Um, microscopy makes me part of a wider microscopy community that extends backwards even into time. Um, so I feel that I'm a natural explorer and yeah, they used to call it a natural historian or naturalist. Yeah, um, Observing the environment and uh, documenting the environment for its own sake um, and thereby increasing the knowledge of the world. Um, that is a very important, uh, I think a very important thing. Um, if um, microscopy in the sciences, for example, in research that serves a specific uh, purpose to answer specific research questions. Um, but uh, because uh, for me it is primarily a hobby and uh, an activity that I like doing, then this is the main main purpose. And I think uh, um, if uh, I were to do microscopy only to serve another purpose, um, yeah. To answer a research question, maybe it might not be quite as fun because then you're also kind of limited uh, in what you are able to observe. Uh, I guess, yeah. Well, I've got a little bit of a research background myself, and I also kind of liked using microscopes at that time. Well, so maybe <laughs> I'm not quite correct in what I just said. Well, in any case, um, I don't know if this answered your question because I think it's a kind of a difficult question as well. Um, but uh, in any case, what I encourage you to do again is if you are uh, uncertain about whether microscopy is something for you, um, I would encourage you to still uh, try it out a little bit. Um, don't spend too much money at the beginning and then take it on from there. Okay, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.